Greater Bowie Chamber of Commerce presents the Bowie Business Journal, a program designed to keep our community informed about important business and economic issues. Welcome to Bowie Business Journal. I'm Cindy Freeland, host and co-producer. Today is a wonderful day for a, an outside wedding. Beautiful spring day, sunshine for great photographs. And today I'd like to introduce to my two guests. We're going to be talking about wedding trends. And my guests are Sharon White of the Cape Courtesan. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you, Cindy. And Joy Thorpe of Bowie Florist. Welcome, Joy. Thank you, Cindy. Glad to be here. Good. Um, welcome to both of you. Um, Sharon, would you like to tell us a little bit, of, before we get started, I'd like to know a little bit about your business uh, for both of you. Sharon, could you tell me uh, why you started your business? Well, I started to take Courtesan, um, originally located in Annapolis, uh, relocated to Bowie, which is an exciting area, um, kept me close to the 50 corridor. And I wanted to bring a higher level of quality of cupcakes and cakes to the Bowie area, um, especially to people in PG County. And um, everything that we focus on is made from scratch. And we just wanted to be able to bring that level of quality and detail to uh, the people in the Bowie and PG County area. Okay, great. Thank you. I know myself, I've, I've tasted your cupcakes and they are wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I know you have about 50 flavors, so I've <laughs> been told. And I know, I, th I think I've tried at least 10 of them so far. <laughs> and um, I may have to <laughs> go not not go as often, but um, I, I have enjoyed them, and my parents have enjoyed them. We got some the for my 60th, my parents' 60th wedding anniversary, as you know, uh, for this past weekend, and they were absolutely wonderful. So thank, thank you for you. that. Thank you very much. Joy. We work hard. Joy, what do you offer at Bowie Florist? We offer fresh quality products, whether it's from plants to cut flowers to fruit baskets. Mm -hmm. Um, I say fresh because we get fresh supply in almost every day, if not every other day. My parents enjoyed their, their 60th wedding anniversary arrangement, and Good. thank you for that. You're welcome. And um, if anybody would like to see that, it would be, it's on the, the Bowie Florist Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And um, you both have Facebook pages, I understand, so, yes. um, and, and websites as well, so mm -hmm. anybody can check the credits at the end of the show and uh, either call Sharon and Joy or contact them by email or check out their websites. So all that information will be at the end of the show. And um, wedding trends, there's a lot of things going on right now um, as far as trends. Sharon, can you share a little bit about the wedding trends that you know about for in the cake industry? Sure. Um, because of the economy, uh, primarily, a lot of people have been trying to find ways to cut costs in the cup corners. So what we have done in the past few years is introduce cupcake towers. They're more cost effective um, mm -hmm. because uh, they're, they're smaller, they're perfect serving size, and we offer different sizes of cupcakes for the cupcake tower. And a lot of times it eliminates the cost cutting fee that some of the other, some venues charge mm -hmm. for when you have to actually cut a large cake or cut a wedding cake. So for a cost saving measure in the past few years, cupcake towers have been a very popular trend. I'd say we've done well over about 300 cupcake weddings. Wow, that's yeah. great. That's so we're great. excited about that. And, um, it, you know, we can, people can customize it. They can add real flowers. As you can see, Joy's Beautiful Bouquet, that can easily be incorporated into the cupcake towers. Mm -hmm. And um, we can also do, uh, put, you know, fondant pieces and all different kind of designs and logos and monograms. Anything that can really showcase the uniqueness of the couple can be done with cupcakes and done on a more user-friendly budget. For the most part, cupcakes are about half the price of a wedding, really? of a traditional wedding cake. Really, that's great. That's great to know. 
Um, I see you have some samples. Yeah. So can you tell us what flavors they are? Well, up at the top, we have our traditional red velvet with cream cheese buttercream. Um, in the middle is a chocolate cake with chocolate buttercream and a chocolate cake with white chocolate with white butter vanilla buttercream. We offer all of these in our store. We're open from Tuesday through uh, Saturday, and we're closed by Sundays. We're for by appointment only on Sundays, and we're always closed on Mondays. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Joy, since I know the cake industry is takes a lot of time to put a, a cake together mm -hmm. as well. Um, not only a cake, but also cupcake towers. But with you, with your flower arrangements for, for weddings, mm -hmm. I know you have small weddings and larger mid-sized mid weddings, larger huge weddings. How, how far in advance do you think that someone would, would really need to order flowers for a wedding? It de would depend on the extent of the size of the wedding, the type of flowers they want. Um, realistically, um, at the shortest length of time, two weeks, mm -hmm. um, mainly because if I have another wedding for that date or you know, depending on the size of the wedding, I only like to take maybe one or two for the same date depending on the time, um, the times the weddings are and the size. Um, truly, you know, a month or two months definitely is, you know, the good time to place the order. Okay, so two months in advance. Right. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. And what are some of the trends that you've seen, Joy, recently for, for weddings? Well, still, I think the main trend in, I think Martha started, Stewart started this <laughs> years ago, is the hand-tied bouquets. Okay. That are wrapped in the ribbon, and, you know, some of them have the, you know, stones coming down the front. But that's still very popular. The... Um, cascading ones that were back in the years have kind of faded out. Okay. Um, so more compact. Yes. Um, things that aren't going to fall apart and make right. people trip on <laughs> right. their dresses. And Okay, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. And uh, Sharon, are you a member of the Greater Bowie Chamber of Commerce? I am a member of the Chamber of Commerce. I'm okay. excited to be uh, a member of that. And I um, look forward to a, a lot of the events that they happen to have. I know they have the uh, uh, a, the bridal, the, not the bridal, the fashion show mm -hmm. um, coming Taste up in April. We'll be participating in that. Oh, great. Yes. Great. Yeah, Taste of Bowie, mm -hmm. um, April 11th, is it? Um, I believe it's April 11th. I'm not sure. I'll have to check on that date. <laughs> okay. uh, but if you wanted to go to bowiechamber.org, you can check out all the, the events there. And... Um, so you're going to be participating in that event. What are you, are you going to have a booth there, or what are you going to be doing? How are you going to participate? Um, I'm going to be donating some product to um, to the show. Mm -hmm. um, I won't be able to do a booth because we'll be doing another event, um, a much a little larger event, um, about another week after that. We'll be um, providing the um, desserts for over 300 participants for the Not Vendor Show and the Arena Stage in D.C. Wow! So because of that, I have to limit my commitments, but um, I'm committed to the Chamber of Commerce event, so we'll be donating some products to them for all the for other the members and the participants, participants to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And Joy, what about you? How long have you been a Chamber member? Uh, well, almost 13 years wow. since we've started. Yeah, and um, it's a very good organization, um, very good events, um, and the money raised goes to, you know, good worthy causes. Mm -hmm. That's what type of events do you participate in with your flowers? Um, we've done arrangements for different events the Chamber has had, um, centerpieces, or we'll donate an arrangement or something for a door prize mm -hmm. um, for an event. I, I do know of the Women's Expo. This is our third one coming up in September. Mm -hmm. And you have donated the centerpieces, I think you did for the first year, donated the centerpieces for the, for the tables. Right. And then also a tree, if I remember correctly, for the, the holiday mixer for the silent auction. A tree? A tree. Did you design oh, a, yes. I'm a, a, sorry. a holiday tree? Yes. As for uh, for donation. Yes, for I usually donation. for the um, the Christmas um, holiday auction, uh, I usually donate a centerpiece or some mm -hmm. type of 
Christmas type design. Mm -hmm. How long did that tree take you to do? That was gorgeous. <laughs> They're a little bit of time consuming. <laughs> 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 Probably about an hour. An hour? That's yeah. not too bad. No. Yeah. You did such a great job. Thank you. You did such a great job. Thank you. You were, you were really very, very talented. And um, I, I really uh, love all your work. It's very, very pretty. Thank you. And um, Sharon, you did a great job on your cupcakes, too. I haven't known you as long as I've known Joy. I've <laughs> known you. Joy quite a while. <laughs> Thank you. But I, I'm, I am getting, looking forward to, to getting to know you as well <laughs> Thank um, you. for a long time. Um, let's get back to your businesses a little bit. What events, well, you mentioned, Sharon, a couple of events that you're going to be attending. What are some of the events that are coming up that, where people can come and visit you? Um, well, we're, he we're heading into the wedding season right now, and because of that, we focus on doing our uh, cupcake towers as well as our wedding cakes. On average, our wedding cakes t are a little bit more elaborate than what you see at some of the other venues, so we're a little bit more pricier when it comes to the wedding cakes, and we try and make sure we allocate enough time to give the bride and groom the appropriate time that it takes and, the, and that they deserve to have to spend on their cake, so we limit our our actual participation of events during the wedding season from April to October. Okay. So uh, we'll just be in the shop working hard. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Joy? What are some of the events where people can come visit you? Do you are you planning any events? Not at this time, okay. um, mainly because of I've got a short staff now, mm -hmm. small staff, and I'm there at the shop six days a week, mm -hmm. pretty much, so it's hard to get out. Mm -hmm. And when did you start your business, Joy? My husband and I um, bought it in September of 1999. 99? Mm-hmm. Good long time. Yes. Good long time. Fabulous. <laughs> now, I've, I worked at that store when I got out of high school originally. <laughs> so I worked for the original owner and the second owner and then... Wow. So. Long history there at that same yeah. spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and where are you located? Whitehall Shopping Center on Route 197. Okay. Okay, and Sharon, where are you located? We're also located on Route 197, kind of very oh, close to neighbors. The, to Joy and Blue <laughs> Flores, kind, kind of uh, shopping center neighbors. Okay. Right. So uh, while Joy's in, uh, and Bowie Flores is in uh, the Whitehall Shopping Center, the Cake Courtesan is located in Bowie Plaza, which is just the shopping center right next to Whitehall. Okay, great. Is there anything else that you would like to add about your, your new shop, Sharon? Well, we're um, open, um, again, from Tuesdays through Saturdays. Uh, Sundays by appointment only. We try and reserve Sundays for consultations. Mm -hmm. We do all kind of cakes, not just uh, cupcakes and not just wedding cakes. We do cakes for all events. We try and say that we want to be the cake person that you consider for major life events. Mm. So think of us for the first birthday, the fifth birthday, as well as the... Uh, the sweet 16s and all the major milestones. So we'll be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what about you, Joy? What else can you add about your business? Um, we're there to please the customers. And you're up on the latest trends. It's Joy true. Was, <laughs> Joy was <laughs> polite enough to provide us with some flowers for a bridal show that we did, and we got so many compliments on it. Oh, wonderful. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. she's up on the latest trends and um, provides beautiful flowers for all occasions, and uh, it's definitely quality that you'll notice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of flowers do you prefer working with, Joy? Pretty much anything. I mean, right now, springtime. I love peonies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the tulips and iris. Um, it's just so colorful and you know, bright and cheerful. Just um, to make someone happy bouquet. It's just Aww. you know. So <laughs> but, um, it, that's what we're there for: is to put a smile on someone's face. Hmm. And when the delivery person comes back and says, oh, they love the bouquet, it was so pretty, it's, you know, it just makes you know why you're there. Yeah, you know. that's great, that's great. I love flowers myself. Yes. Um, m my birthday was in March, and my mother usually, she didn't this time, but usually brings me daffodils for my birthday because daffodils are my birthday flower. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, she didn't, and... That's, it was kind of disappointing, but <laughs> I, I didn't even ask her about it, but uh, she usually does bring me flowers for mm -hmm. my birthday, daffodils. I also love roses, peach-colored roses, oh. daffodils and roses, so, and they smell so good, and lilies. Yes. I love the lilies. They smell wonderful. 
and the, wonderful. The stargazers and the white orientals, yes. Mm -hmm. well, you, you either love them <laughs> or they're pe because oh, of the strong, strong fragrance, yeah. there's people that, you know, yeah. say, no, I don't want lilies. It is, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. I'm more of a modern flower girl. I like yeah. the anemones in that. Oh. And oh. uh, the moth orchids or the, you know, those are more streamlined. Yes. Mm -hmm. They are. The orchids, did you, did you mention, Sharon? Uh, did you say from, orchids? From, what's the appropriate Philanophysis. name? Philanophysis. Right. Oh, my gosh. I know them as moth orchids. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a shorter version. Shorter yeah. version. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I've never heard of that before. It, moth orchid? I've heard of it, but it's been a while. It's we get a lot of requests for to do them on cakes. So um, I also specialize in um, doing handmade sugar flowers on mm -hmm. cakes. So anything that's been created in nature, I can turn it into a work of art in sugar wow. and put it on the cakes. Because even though we love to have real flowers because there's nothing that can really compare, sometimes the, uh, Joy knows that flowers can contain some pesticides right. and it shouldn't mm -hmm. be considered something that, that close to something edible. So we prefer to create sugar, uh, create flowers out of sugar where we can actually put it into or close to the cake. Mm -hmm. But as still try and put, incorporate some real flowers around right. it as much as we possibly can because mm -hmm. it just, yeah. nothing can compare to that. Oh, yeah. Yep. So is it granulated sugar that you're making these flowers from or do you have a certain formula or um, recipe? It's not actually granulated sugar. It's, it's, they're made from a form of sugar, but the form of sugar dries a little firm. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's something that's sugar-based and made from all edible materials, but it's not something you really want to eat. Uh. Um, <laughs> it's usually called gum paste, or um, in England it's referred to as sugar paste. Okay. And it's, um, this we allows us to mold and manipulate the flowers and, and vein it and make it almost as realistic as a real flower, uh, something we do petal by petal. So it's pretty time consuming, um, but it's very relaxing for me to actually mm -hmm. to do it as well. But um, you know, and we can color it to try and get the colors as, as close to a real flower. Um, but it's, it's something that, you know, is made from an actual form of sugar. It doesn't start with a granulated sugar, but some sugar-based products. Mm -hmm. Now, is that something that can be kept uh, preserved, or is that something that bugs are going to get at? <laughs> no, or? that's the beauty of gum paste. <laughs> it dries pretty firm so that they can be kept forever. We've wow. had some um, customers who would take it off, take the, the gum paste flowers off their cake and they can put them in like a vase, but they just have to be careful about dusting them because they can get a little brittle or they okay. can put it under a container. And right. uh, the beauty of it is they can last forever. Hmm. And what about you, Joy? Do you know any way of preserving any of your wedding flowers? Have, have you there are a couple anything? places, and actually I just got something in the mail um, last week a company that prefer, preserves wedding bouquets. Mm -hmm. um, there used to be a place in Glen Burnie. I don't know if they're still there or not. They're, I mean, sometimes to preserve them it costs more than the bouquet itself. Right. But um, this place does them in shadow boxes. Mm -hmm. And um, actually I went on the website and it looks beautiful. Mm. What about um, that hanging upside down method? <laughs> that just drives them out. Oh, okay. um, and they get a little brittle. Um, and what they do when they preserve them is freeze dry. Um, oh, so they a, look fresh? Yes. I mean, they still shrink in size, but they hold the color better. Mm -hmm. uh, when you, you know, just air dry them, they'll get very brittly and crumbly and kind of change color a lot, you know, lose the color. Hmm. Um, like if you've got a lavender, it's going to look like tannish brown. Oh, okay. So uh, you lose So we don't Monica. recommend hanging Not them upside down. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Status can be done like that. That's true. Status and that, can be in, in certain other flowers, if you hang them upside down or even if you just put them in a vase, they'll, they'll last just, forever. Right. Um, and it depends on like the flower, like orchids don't hold their color as well like as a rose would when you dry it. So it depends on the flower. Um, on how well it holds up. Mm -hmm. One of the, I'm sorry, Cindy. One of the things that I've always wondered is, after you the wedding and you have your bouquet, how do you make it last a little while longer? If it's one of the hand yes. tied bouquets, yes. um, just recut the ends and put them in a vase of water. Just straight water. Straight water. Um, and we have packets of preservative, but I've got one customer that comes in every two weeks to get fresh flowers. She never uses the preservative and says hers lasts almost two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, 
because I always put it in and she goes, no, no, I don't use that. Yeah. But um, then some people say sugar or like 7-Up. So there's different, you know, things you could do. Hmm. Um, but when I take flowers home, I just put them in straight water. So you recommend that, let's say, for example, if I had a bunch of roses or something, I mean, even just cut out of my garden, mm -hmm. to cut the ends and just change the water every day? Is Def that what you say? Definitely. Okay. Um, and when you change the water, it's best to recut the ends also, mm -hmm. because the longer they're in water, the you know the the pores start to close up. Okay. So giving them a fresh cut will open them back up again to draw more water. Oh, very interesting. But you don't recommend any kind of sugar or. I, I truthfully, I don't up. think it's necessary. I mean, we use it at the shop when we process the flowers when they come in, because mm -hmm. they've been in boxes and they need you know fresh you know so. We use it, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I send it out on you know when we do wrap flowers and stuff. But you know, from my, what I've you know heard from different people, some say I use it and I don't use it, and I don't see any difference. So hmm. it probably it might depend on their household. The temperature of a house will make a big difference. Right. Yes, if it's warm or um, if it's humid, it's better for the flowers. Okay. Um, if it's warm or a dry heat. They won't last quite as long. Hmm. Hmm. A lot of factors. Is there hmm. any way of keeping the petals on roses <laughs> so they don't come apart so quickly? <laughs> it, it, there are different breeds um, of roses. Some open very quickly. Mm -hmm. And then I could get one bunch of roses and, you know, ten of them open and three never do anything. <laughs> It's, it's, you know, it's difficult and it's hard. And then, you know, you'll send out a dozen roses and the customer called, well, 11 open and one didn't. <laughs> well, not a whole lot we can do about that. <laughs> well, they'll come in and I'll give them another rose. But mm -hmm. um, it, 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 it's hard because we only, we get them in one day and, you know, most of the time they're, they go out by the next day. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we can keep them in for a few days to make sure they open. Right. Because um, by the time then the customer gets them, they're totally open and they don't want that. And they don't want that. Right. right. And what's the term that you consider that when, it, when it's too open? Blown. Blown. Mm -hmm. Blown flower. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What other trends can you think of, Sharon? Can you think besides the cupcake towers for weddings um, in your industry? Well, in uh, the wedding cakes portion of uh, weddings, um, bling is still pretty big. <laughs> a, yes. a lot of people still bling love their the bling. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> so we find ourselves working a lot with um, rhinestone banding, um, and we'll put that on different designs in and around the, um, the cakes. We try, um, because we specialize in fondant designs primarily, it allows us to be very flexible with um, some of the designs that, that we can do. And um, fondant is that, that kind of sugary coating overlay um, that is put on the cakes and allows it to have a blank canvas. So a lot of cake designers prefer to use it because we, it's very flexible for us. We can paint it, we can you know, imprint it, we can use molds and, and re, um, get realistic two-dimensional, even three-dimensional type figures with it. So it's a lot more flexible than buttercream. Some people don't like the taste of it, but what we try and tell people, there's two important things to know about fondant. One is that you get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. you, you can't go in, expect to go in to a, a hobby store and buy fondant and think it's going to be something that a professional baker uses because it's, it's not. We don't, we don't use anything that you can pretty much get from a hobby type store. And um, secondly, that um, putting fondant a fondant is also a sugar-based product, so it tastes a little sugary. So putting a sugary-based buttercream under a sugary fondant is really not <laughs> complimentary to the palate. So we recommend that, you know, we use a, a, a more refined buttercream to go underneath the fondant. So it becomes an overall compliment um, and a, a tasteful experience for people when they eat it. So um, it's important for people to know that when, you're, when they're looking at fondant cakes, that there are differences. There's about four major product brands that are out there that, again, um, start from the hobbyist all the way up to what I like to call the Cadillac of fondant. And so there's differences in between. So for someone who's not familiar with it, um, I will suggest don't rule it out. Definitely give it a try. Taste it, see what it's like. Taste it against the cake. 
um, and then see if that's something that they can eat. And in the end of the day, if they really don't like it, but the, the baker has to use it to get that design, just peel it off. Mm -hmm. So fondant is still pretty trendy and bling. Bling is still <laughs> king. <laughs> bling is king. Yeah, bling yeah. is still in. And um, so people are starting to come back to the romantic styles of cakes as well. So sugar flowers um, are becoming more prevalent as well. And not necessarily a cake that's full of sugar flowers, but you know, having something that's that one or two focal flowers. And we can do the, the full blown flowers and putting that on, an, on a big tall cake and having one big dinner size dahlia or something is really elegant mm -hmm. and nice. So that's, yes. that's pretty popular too. Mm -hmm. So for those people who, who want the effect of a beautiful flower but don't want to have it full of that, they, that's, and it looks very modern and clean. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, still, that's still it. But um, the stacked cakes are not so popular anymore where you have just round, 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 square, square, square. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are, are focusing more on having different shapes um, I'm finding people are playing with ovals and hexagons and really? paddle shapes. Yeah, um, because it, it it's allows a little bit more representation of the couple. So um, they don't have to have that traditional kind of stack cake that people had in the past. Mm -hmm. So um, personality and creativity is something that's been prevalent in the last few years and is continuing. Um, color is not so much anymore. People are coming back to the lighter shades. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're shying away from having so much color on cakes and kind of falling back into that soft romantic palette. And um, I think just this year um, alone, a lot more romantic and softness is what I've seen mm. so far in the wedding cake trends. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. What about you, Joy? Are there any any other trends that you would like that you've noticed that you'd like to mention um, in colors in no, particular? I'm finding the opposite. Oh, um, really? In brides bouquets, I'm getting brides with wanting more color in theirs. Um, and actually, I've got a wedding coming up where the bride has most of the color, where the bridal party's most more white with a little splash of color. Mm -hmm. But. Um, the brides are carrying more color now right. than the, the all white. And I think that's, that it that's, used to be. that's what they want is that focal point right. so everything else is a little toned down. Right. Mm -hmm. And again, the bling, the mm -hmm. you know, the the rhinestones or, you know, the strands of the beads mm -hmm. is um popular. Mm -hmm. So the strands of the beads would be on the array, on the the bouquet itself, just yes. hanging down. Not I mean not over, you know, powering, but just, mm -hmm. you know, little Spears coming out of the bouquet, or mm. uh, on, the, on the top, on the top of through it the bouquet, out? Yeah. yes, mm. oh. or the, in the in the rhinestones going down the holder, and you know sometimes through some of the flowers. There's right, you know, rhinestones in the flowers. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, we need to wrap up now. Sharon White of the Cake Courtesan, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and Joy Thorpe of Bluey, I'm sorry, Bluey Florist. <laughs> I appreciate you both coming out and for the audience if you have a wedding coming up and you have or you have um, a wed if you have a wedding planned or if you're getting married you need to um, contact Joy and Sharon and the information will be at the end of the show I'm Cindy Freeland and I appreciate you joining us and we'll see you next time <laughs>